Okay, we're on helmet cam again, guys. Now I was waiting for all the activity to get kind of done. But we're doing a light pole load. We're going to Virginia. We're down in Houston. I just emptied a flatbed load of steel. And uh, this particular trailer, like I said before, 51 foot step deck, sliding axle, 41 foot bottom. So these light poles are 40 foot, and it was no issue of grabbing them and putting them on my step deck. And so you can see it's going to ride nice and stable because they're not really that high. You don't have any worries at all. But for my capacity, it works out really well. Now, I'm going to be running three bellies, there, there, and there. And then I'm going to throw every strap I can over the top. But I've got most all my winches all set. Uh, once I throw them over, I'll pull them up till I hear the buckle rattle. Then I know to stop. Now, the next trick I'm going to show you is feeding these other guys through. I'm doing good, how about you? Okay, I just stick that on there and put this right on through, pushes it over to the other side because I can't reach through. I'm shooting a video, so I'm just showing guys tricks on how to do all this stuff. Huh? Virginia? There we go, next one as you can see, it just kind of holds the edge. Now you can do it the other way, you can stick the strap in to the hollow tube, but you have to go manually undo it on the other side. It doesn't always do a very good job to just pull it because it doesn't, it doesn't always work that way really good. So I'm just going to set it there and get these fed. Saves a lot of climbing, a lot of hassle. You can hear the buckles rattle. That's the sound you're, you're listening for. We turn this one over. Okay, that's all fed. I'm going to take it with me just in case. That one's done. If I don't have to climb, I'm not gonna. There's that thing that over there so I can see it. There's my twist. Now this is one that you do want to do your twist on. <laughs> you gotta watch for these pieces. This is sharp as hell. You don't want to go over the top of that. And I look to the other side. A lot of times I have everything just sitting right exactly where it needs to. I didn't want to be abrupt with that driver, but I was just trying to get my video done. Because they're all Landstar. Most everybody here is Landstar, so let me move this one just slightly. Because it might be different on the other side. You got to look at both sides. You can look for pieces like that. So where we're at over here. right here. Now this one got twisted so I just do that. Now I'm glad it did the first shot so I didn't look like a fool but sometimes that doesn't work. Then you end up flipping, flopping back and forth. And okay, so now these are fairly short here. This shouldn't be an issue. I would love to, you know, to get my twist in, but I might just try it. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it and be done with it, and I don't have to worry. 
they're fairly short though, they're not going to buzz, but these ones that are up high, they're going to big time. So I got through only three bellies, but they're spaced out. Load is 33,000. Working load limit, 5,400. So, you know, I just want to make sure that I've got enough to cover pretty much the bottom half if I need to. And I do. So, half of 33 is, you know, going to be 16,5, but, um, you know, this is pretty close. Having three straps is great. I just want to make sure that I've got some kind of coverage down on the bottom. Oh, yeah, twist. There we go. And it's pretty close to the front. I told them to go ahead and take it up to the bulkhead if they wanted to. But they didn't. That's all right. It's close. It's not going to matter. If it does slide from braking, let's say I have a hard braking situation, then it's not going to go anywhere. And I got tested. on my uh, flatbed or uh, my flat steel load coming down there was a merge on a and I didn't get the camera on it was too too fast it was two semis one coming up beside me on the left truck in front of me started moving over at the merge now sign well that's all fine and dandy except they pushed the other tractor and, and trailer outfit into the dirt. You can see the guy fishtail. I thought, oh boy, here we go. I really thought that that guy was going to bite it right there. But he didn't. He pulled it out. Swift run him right into the, the ditch. I was kind of amazed. When I passed the driver, he didn't look like he was brand new or young or whatever, but, you know, just, you never know. It's a training outfit, so, you know, I can't complain about all of them. I trained at Warner. But I just, because I have done that, I can make a guess at a scenario, right or wrong, there's several possibilities. But... I don't know. I don't really like that. I guess it's because it's the way this... I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go change that on the other side just to match up. I keep forgetting this stupid trailer has got these here and it blocks these. So I have to move it over. And that's just the way it is. So I will go move it so I don't have too heavy of an angle get all these guys twisted, make sure everybody's pulled down happy. And I'm taking my time. Normally I'd go ahead and button them all up and everything as I go. That's my normal procedure, but I want to make sure that I have no issues with strap locations. I just bought brand new straps, so, you know, when you see straps starting to get a little worn or if they're frayed edges and stuff like that, you know, it's time to cut the buckle off or at least stick them somewhere where you're not going to use them, get them mistaken. And these are from, I'll give them a free plug, Tri-City Canvas, Granite City, Illinois. There's a number, 800-966-1662. They give uh, Landstar discounts. And they sell you cases of straps. And, you know, it's usually a few dollars off. And that's fine. I, I mean, I can't complain. Any discount is, is a good thing. They have specials on tarps. Like, you can buy these basic machine tarps like I did. Make sure I got the right one. Yeah, that's going to be past the light. They're like square tarps. You know, there's no envelope pins. It's just a pain in the ass. Yeah, I 
is way over here. Another tether just like mine. Uh, ask him if he likes his trailer or not. We'll see how that goes. The only good thing about this trap is the straps are stretched out like that, you got a lot less wrap. It usually goes fairly quick. I keep bumping the camera. Sorry about that, guys. They told me to go ahead and strap here that I'm not in anybody's way. If I had to move, don't let anybody force you to move. A lot of these people here are very familiar with Landstar, their safety and stuff. You know, you got straps hanging. You ain't going to move. Tighten down two of them. Put the rest of them on the deck. And then go move. <coughs> but don't let anybody get you in a tizzy and force you to do something that's stupid. But the folks here are pretty squared away. They loaded fast. They know everybody wants to get the hell out of here. It's Labor Day weekend. They want to get all their work done too and get the hell out. That's why I go through and hand tighten each one. I pull them, pull all the slack out so I don't get to the end and go, well, damn, that's some bitch you stay tightening up. You'll learn a routine. You may not like the way I do it, but you see how fast I do it. You know, wrap your straps the way you see fit. If you get a trainer, you know, because you guys are going to have to go through platform training. There's no freaking doubt in my mind. Don't just go out there bare naked with no idea what the hell you're doing. You can kill people. Uh, it had been a few years since I'd done platform. I had to go take a three-day refresher at Landstar, and that's fun. Zero complaints about that. I learned two new techniques. I learned from people that had done heavy haul for 35, 40 years. I ain't bitching. You never can tell, because like at uh, Warner flatbed, they only have so much equipment and so many uh, styles of securement and freight. We're pretty much, you know, so widely uh, diversified on freight types. You're going to need a lot of different securement procedures or techniques and equipment. You're going to need something completely different. I'm going to at least get this stuff buttoned up and rolled up so in case somebody needs needs me to move then I can do that. You see how fast it goes. I've been doing it for so many years. Now see, I moved it and I didn't do exactly what I just told you guys to do just a little while ago. Because I moved the location to the track. That is a prime example. I'm not embarrassed. That just shows you what happens when you start rolling and going, oh, wait a minute, it's not tightening up. Well, I just mentioned that a few minutes ago. Okay. And that's the one I just moved, so no biggie. It's just bloody hot out here, folks. I'm telling you, I'm just pouring down water again. Every time I come down in this area with the humidity, because I live in Montana, it is just... It just saps the moisture out of a person. Even the local folks don't stand out in the sun out here. They're not stupid. But I have no choice because my truck doesn't fit inside anything they have to get me in the machine. You just have to grin and bear it. Pace yourself. I've got water that I froze the night before. When I pull that out of there, I've got ice water. Sip on it, cool myself down, sit in the air conditioning. 
watch your heart rate. If you're over 50 like I am, you know, I'm, I may not be in the best shape, but I'm also not a complete couch potato. Just watch yourself. Your heart rate starts going up, you're getting flush. You get you see stars, you're starting to get dizzy, get the hell out of the sun, go sit down. Get someplace cool, get some water. Take a break. It might be 15, 20 minutes before you can return. It shouldn't matter. If anybody gives you any crap, just tell them, you know, I got I think I'm getting a bit of heat exhaustion and I start getting dizzy. That's not safe. All you have to do is that uh, four-letter word, it's the only good four-letter word you probably should be using if it's basically safe. There's other ones you could use, but it may not always be cool with a customer, so we're not going to do that. I can't see. Yeah, sorry. Yeehaw. Last strap. Just pull it up and through. See? Two hands. Snap it in. Under wrap. <laughs> and then estimate. And I pull my hands up like this. Straight up through. Grab it. Pull it up to the edge. Line everything up. Pull my slack. Like that. And I roll it in. These are still new. And they're still a little stiff. Okay. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. We got twelve straps on. Thirty-three thousand. Plenty enough for the actual weight. Bar is hot. I'm gonna do my bellies. <laughs> On some commodities, doing your bellies first, press everything. Pipe, plastic pipe. Be careful how much pressure you put on them, but this one here, it matters not one single bit. I use it. Twist the bar, turn it upside down, grab one more click, turn it back down like this, one more click, and then put the bar through, and another click. There's like four positions that you can do this silly thing with. There's probably more. So that should work. Because I want to make sure that you guys... I've been doing light pulse for... Oh, I just first started doing light pulse 13 years ago. And I did them at Warner, believe it or not. And we did a lot of light pulse. We did a lot of irrigation equipment. But these were companies that were based, some of them, based in Nebraska, where Warner's based out of. And they weren't a bad company years ago. I don't know what they are like now, but I had to change my business model. And you look at the pay model, it didn't really work for me. And that's why I put in my resignation. You know, I never burned bridges. I bought two trucks from those folks. When I finally paid it off, Bern Warner handed me the title. That was a proud day, but there was other ways for me to go about buying it. There are other options out there. That one's belly, all good. I've already made customer contact. I know that they got a parking lot. It's wide open. So when I get there on Tuesday night, I can only deliver on Wednesday. There's going to be 12 trucks. So you can bet your bottom dollar that I'm going to be in there. And I'm going to be either first in line or pretty dang close to it. Wednesday is my cutoff for payroll. If I don't get it in, you know, I'm not going to scream. They got delayed. Because 
still get paid. That should be the following week. That's the way it goes. My wife understands that. She does the adjustments accordingly. She's a great bookkeeper. Type. Yeah, folks, I am definitely ready for a sit down. It's getting close to that point. Yep. I am not seeing stars. I'm not that dizzy. But I can tell you. Oh, that's 241 minus 242. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I guess it's time to sit down. Uh, see you on the road.